Here it is. The Keychron Q0. This is the last thing I'm gonna buy. For a long time. At least for a couple weeks. I mean, my birthday's coming up, so. Um, all right, Keychron Q0, it is a numpad, right? I'm sure you already know that, that's why you're here. Um, it's got your standard numpad right there, but then it's got these other keys on top, these little macro keys, it'll just kind of do whatever you want. Um, and then you can do different layers with QMK via. So I plan on using this as a macro pad for video editing. And I'm um, really looking forward to having just a little keyboard I can use to do that with. On par with my Q11, I feel in quality and build, I'm sure, but this is just a different type of board. It is more low profile in the way that it's constructed. It doesn't have um, any kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't have a cover, top plate. I can't think of what it's called. But look, it doesn't have that. Um, but let's just check it out very carefully. But this is the bare bones edition. It's black. Give me that. Give me that. Keychron Q0, a mechanical numpad. Uh, this is not wireless. There's no Bluetooth. There's no 2.4 gigahertz. This is a different type of foam than I'm used to. Oh, because, yeah, I know why. Because the tools are like built into this foam. It's like real thick foam, like cardboard almost. Another piece of foam here. We've got a fairly standard, oh, this is the nice metal on metal. This is the same cord I got with the Q11. Braided, little Keychron logo branding on the cord as well as on the, the tips here. What's in here? I've got a couple spare feet. Got the numpad, information about switches. This seems like it was opened and just wasn't sealed correctly. Don't like that. Underneath here, we've got all the standard tools, a key cap puller, a switch puller, and a screwdriver. I'm not even gonna bother pulling those out. I'm gonna leave them in there forever, probably. Here is the numpad. And I knew it was gonna be heavy, but man, this is really, This is nice. So standard. Uh, all right. I knew what I was getting into when I opened this. I'm really excited about putting this together. I might take it apart before I put it together. What do you think about that? Okay. Let's take a few minutes and disassemble. I just want to see what is inside of this thing, even though I've seen it for myself on some videos. I guess I haven't seen it for myself. I've just seen it on some videos. Okay. Got my little hoed out. I like this little guy. When I bought it, full disclosure, I thought that I was getting a mini little electric screwdriver but I got it for like $14 on Amazon. So I should have known better. It's way too cheap, but this is great. I mean, all these screws are always so small anyway, so it's just not a lot of effort to take these out ever. That one seems to be stripped. If I got one that's stripped, I'm gonna be pretty bummed. Let's try this bigger bit. It came out, but the screw is definitely stri not stripped. That's not the right word, but it's definitely been I 
don't know what to do about that. I don't have a spare, but it's okay. What do I do now? Let's take out this piece. It's just a metal piece. Machined aluminum. Aluminium. And then there's this here. Can I just flip it over? Okay. There's something in there. This is the foam in between the PCB and the top plate. I have my PCB. I got my stabilizers. And then there's another piece of foam on the back here. Perforated foam there, just to accommodate those holes there, which I guess those are for the screws. Okay, makes sense. And then there's another piece of plastic down here, and then I heard someone say they couldn't really get it out. Oh, that was easy. This is just like a film. And then there's more aluminum on the bottom, so I don't even, I'm not going to bother taking this one out here. I'm just going to leave it. Okay. There we go. There's our little guy. Put this foam in this way here first. Make sure it lines up with those holes. Um, this is gonna go here. This piece goes like that. Now I could use some of my, I'm not going to. I've got some new stabilizers, but this is like the highest quality device that I have, I believe. So I don't think it really needs to be modified in that way. So I'm not going to. Oh my god. I don't know why this isn't sticking on here. My gigantic fingers are just too big for that delicate detail. <sighs> okay, guys, I have been agonizing over what exactly I'm going to do with this numpad here. Um, I thought about doing the Hacker Mint. Um, I was going to do the white ones just to match this for right now. But these macro keys, I don't have enough keys for up here. If I'm using those, I call them the PlayStation keys over here. So I decided to take two of them off. And I'm going to use those up here along with escape and back, backspace. Um, and maybe I can macro that to be backspace and that to be escape. And then who knows with these two. But um, that's what I think I'm going to do. I had these black ones out because I thought maybe I'd do black and white and have that contrast there. But I think I just want to see what they all look like. Everything white here first. So let's do it. I got my switches. Everything's pre-measured. Let's just put them in here. A little bit of information about this. Um, obviously, this is a Keychron Q0. It is a mechanical numpad. It only works with the USB attached. There is not a Mac and Windows switch on here. Uh, you so from my understanding, there's four different layers, two for Mac and two for Windows. Um, I doubt that I'm going to use a full layer for Mac, but we'll see. I might surprise myself. 
Um, if you have something like this, how do you use your keys? What do you use them for? I'm planning on using this for um, help with video editing. And also, I'm just much more comfortable having a numpad. I have to do calculations for work and just for other things sometimes. And it's just not convenient to use the number row up here as much as it is to have this. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone by having a macro pad and a number pad. And this thing's really this nice looking too. Um, it's really heavy. It's made well. It's going to last me a long time as long as I don't beat it up, right? We'll see. Um, okay, so covered QMK via. It's got a thousand hertz polling rate. Uh, and that doesn't change because it's always going to be plugged in. Sometimes it drops if you were to use a uh, Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz. CNC machined aluminum body. Um, obviously, you can see that it's hot swappable because I'm putting these switches in right now. And I don't have to solder anything. That's great news. Uh, the RGBs are south facing. You can see them right here. The one that I got was bare bones. So it didn't include any of these switches. I had these Keychron K-Pro banana switches here. I had these from another Keychron order from back in the day. So I'm happy to keep it in the family here with Keychron. Something I thought was cute on the website. I'm calling this a premium metal gadget. They know, they know who they're talking to. What else? Um, there's a bunch of layers here. I already took it apart. Um, but there's the bottom case and that weird case foam. And then, well, that weird plastic sheet and then the case foam over it. And then it takes us to the PCB. And then there's a, another layer of foam in between the PCB and the uh, top plate. Uh, we've got those stabilizers installed already and lubed kind of rattly but not too bad so we'll do escape that was tough circle square back num lock divide times minus seven <laughs> you guys know why six was afraid of seven I'm sure you already know, but if you didn't know, it's because 789, 789, get it? I'd be afraid of somebody that ate somebody else too. Four, five. Hey, shout out to my dad, Mike. Mike, if you're watching, thanks for uh, encouraging me in this. I mean, you're like one of those people that would, I think, would have the least amount of interest <laughs> in something like this. Um, but the last time we talked about this, you just were genuinely interested in this. And um, just makes me feel good, Dad. So thank you. I love you. Um, guys, call your dad. Tell him you love him. He tried so hard. I'm a dad now, too, and I know how. It's a, it's a really rough job. All right. Look, we got it. Okay. I'm going to plug it in and see if all the keys work. Turn this light off. Seven, eight, nine. Nine doesn't work. Five doesn't work. Seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, five. Times doesn't work. Okay. Five, nine, and times. Man, that's not good. Nine times. I don't remember him being sick nine times. Maybe that's because he wasn't sick. He was skipping school. Uh, yep. I bent that pin right there. Bent that pin right there. Bent that right there. Oh my gosh. My stash of bent pins is growing. It's 
Not a cool stash to have. Nice and easy. Nine. Five. Nine times. Okay, let's plug it back in. Works. 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 Zero times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's that, 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 that. What is that button? Wait a second. That already acts like a back. Okay. And this acts as escape. Let's just take these two off. Put this one right here. Circle, and square. Okay. Plug in the SETI. Let's open QuickTime. Nope. New audio recording. Okay, 